Mm -hmm. Hi there, everyone. It's Alex from Drummer Artists of Our Studios. Today, we're going to be taking some of these and making them into one of these. So let's get started. So back in 2018, the first foam prop I ever built myself was Stormbreaker from Avengers Endgame. I was going to Gen Con that year and decided I wanted to cosplay as Thor, so I remade, or I should say reworked, my Thor costume. And to complete the outfit, I went as far as I had long hair, I cut my hair to have the short hair that he had in Endgame, and I built a foam Stormbreaker. I had not yet made a foam Mjolnir. The, the best Mjolnir I have for going around the conventions is the plastic one that was made by uh, Ruby's. Cos uh, costuming and props and stuff that I got this one at Spirit Halloween I think back when the first Avengers came out I've got other Mjolnirs but they're solid wood sheeted out in plate steel so they weigh seven eight pounds at a minimum so I could carry them around but they're not the best to have all day at a convention so I wanted to make a foam one to go with my f foam Stormbreaker to start that process, I've got to build the big block at the top. To do that, we are going to be gluing together two yoga blocks. You can get them on Amazon for fairly cheap. You can find them at thrift stores. I found a few there. The ones I'm using, I believe I picked up at Walmart. They were about five bucks each. So we're gonna start by gluing these together and we're gonna use contact cement to do that. In lining these up, I'm going to kind of use my cutting mat as a guide but since these are nicely manufactured I will also be able to just line them up from their own edges and it should work pretty well I'm starting at one side getting that pressed together and then I'm going to work my way down the blocks so that it squeezes together as it goes. So now there is a nice large block for us to start off for the head of meal there. So from here, I'm gonna come through and I'm actually gonna end up trimming these angled edges off. Now, normally people will do that with a bandsaw. I do not have a bandsaw or any nice large cutting power tool like that. So, for most of this build, I'm doing it the same way I did Stormbreaker, where pretty much sanders are the only power tool I'm going to use in doing this. Everything I do for cutting is going to be done using a simple razor knife. So it is obviously not the cleanest thing on the planet. But that's where I'm going to come back in with a power sander and clean all that up so it's nice and smooth. And that will be done before I do any of the other shaping to it so I've got back to the uniform block. Okay, so I have now cut it down to the shape I need and I have sanded it nice and smooth. So you can see I've actually put a 45 degree miter onto the four edges of the long sides. So this is now going to be the center block of the hammer. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I will sheet out the entire thing first in foam and then I will put another layer on top with my detail just so that I can build this up a little bit and give it that nice smooth surface of the foam right on top so it's not the, the sanded surface.
Now that I have the entire main body sheeted out, I've got the white is one millimeter foam, the black here is a four millimeter foam. So it's all entirely encased in the foam. I'm now going to use one millimeter sheets again to create the second layer going around the outside, which I'll use to build all of these detail shapes going throughout the hammer. Okay, so I've now gone and refined the shape for the rest of the main body, and I have to work on doing these bottom details here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do these sides first, because then I can just create these strips to just lay across the top and make sure they match up on the two sides. So I've got two pieces of two inch one millimeter foam that I've cut. Those will be the pieces I glue onto the side here. So I just need to sketch out right on one of these pieces where I want to do my first cuts. I'll then transfer that to my second piece. So before I glue it on, because I don't want glue to cover the entire area, I'm gonna mark out on the hammer what spot needs to get glued. So other than the cap that goes on the top, the detail work and shaping of the main body of the hammer is done. Next step is going to be to create the two end caps. Now the interesting part about the end caps is that it has the ornate knot work in it. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't made this before, is I wasn't quite sure how to do that and do it justice. Then I found out about the EVA foam clay that you can purchase. So I had already made these, and it is a mold that I pulled directly from this one. So this is an exact replica of the knotwork that is on my toy one. It has shrunk just slightly, but it is the exact same knotwork. So I'm going to be insetting these into the end caps on my foam one. So to create the end caps, I have glued together a block of three pieces of 10 millimeter foam from SKS uh, Props. It is a very nice high density EVA foam that sands beautifully. So this I'll be able to just cut with the razor knife and then sand using my sandy stick to make it nice and smooth. So I have a 5 inch by 5 inch square here, and I've marked off half inch lines from the four sides so that I can cut these first angles here. Once I get those cut, I'll measure off for the corners and get those cut. What I've found works best is holding it on the edge so that I can line up the blade with both the line I need to cut on and the bottom of the piece. So now what I've ended up with is the base is five inches square and the top here is four inches square. On the top I'm going to measure in, I believe five eighths of an inch. Nope, sorry. So from the top I'm going to measure in a half inch, and then on the bottom I'm going to measure in 7 eighths of an inch and connect the lines, and that will form the chamfered edges that I need to put on the four corners. Now before I cut these corners off, 
just to confirm I got my measurements correct, I'm going to hold up one of my design pieces and make sure it fits within those lines. I can sand down this a little bit to make it fit better, but I just wanted to make sure that would fit before I go and do this final cutting. So the same way I cut the sides off here, I'm going to line up at the top and then just gently saw my way down the piece. So now I'm going to come in with my sanding stick and sand those nice and smooth. So in order for me to set the knot work pieces into this, what I have to first do is figure out the sizing I need. So from looking at this one, because each one has to be done differently, I'm going to start by sanding down the knot work piece. So using the same sanding stick, I'm just going to lightly sand down the sides to even it out and reduce some of the foam. Now, this foam clay that you can purchase tends to seem to sand very, very easily and very quickly, almost like a balsa wood. It goes very smoothly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this on the wall. Then I'm going to take my marker and trace it. This way I know exactly where I need to cut into the foam to be able to inset that. So what I'm going to do is score these four lines in, making sure that I cut on the inside of the black line. And I'm probably going to cut down somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch, not quite a quarter, a little bit more than an eighth though. And I'm going to keep my cuts as perpendicular to the wall face as I can. That way they'll be square with my detailed piece as I inset it. So I'm now going to come back in and do an angled cut and try to guesstimate so that these cuts meet at the bottom of that first score line. And what that will do is create a nice channel that pops right out of it. So I now have got those four edges cut out. So now I'm going to use the long axis of the blade and come in and try to dish out the rest of that. It is almost where I want it to be, so I won't cut any more out, but now I'm going to take my sanding stick and actually sand on the inside of the here, which will smooth it out a little bit more and take just a little bit more off so the piece will fit a little bit better. And that pretty much fits exactly how I want it. So now that will get glued in place with contact cement, and the process will be repeated on the other three sides. So here we have both heads glued in place and the shaping of our hammerhead is completely done. The next step is going to be to insert the handle. To do that, I've marked the center on the bottom and I'm going to be using a one inch Forstner bit to bore that out. Forstner bit can be better than a spade bit or anything because it will bore the entire material out and they tend to work fairly well with the foam as long as you're careful. That now is pretty much squared on. So now I'll cut the handle to the length and I can start doing the finishing, wrapping it, and putting some details around it to make it fit. So the last part for the hammer head is the crown cap. It goes on the top of the hammer and this is where the runic inscription of Odin's spell 
goes onto the hammer. So what I have here is a piece of four millimeter foam and a high res printout of what that is to be. I have taped it onto the phone with double stick tape and I'm going to use a sharp knife to score all of the lines into the foam. Once I get everything glued together before I seal it, I have to come in and use a heat gun to just close all the pores of the foam so it doesn't take as much primer and sealer to cover the hammer. But that heat gun will get all of these thin lines and make them expand so you'll actually see these cuts in the foam. You don't have to cut too deep into the foam. Only a millimeter or so will do the job. But it's just the long process of going through and making sure you get as many of the lines as you can. So for the handle, I'm using a one inch wooden dowel. I've bored the hole in the head so that this will slip in. You can see the mark here. This is how much is actually inside the hammerhead. That leaves me about 12 and a quarter inches of a handle. It will be sheeted out in this brown faux leather. Uh, this is actually scrap left over from when I made my Thor suit. So I, I like it that it'll actually match the suit. But before I put that on, I'm gonna bulk the handle up just a little bit more by adding on a sheet of one millimeter foam. To do that, I'm gonna be using the contact cement and you can see running down the rod, I have actually drawn a line and that is simply so that I can have an orientation so I know when I'm gluing this on that I am putting it on straight so that when I roll it over, it will match up to the other side. Now, the other important thing to know that I did here is I made a foam ruler. I used the same thickness of foam that I'm going to be wrapping around it and I marked it every eighth of an inch. I used this when determining how much foam I needed. And it's important to use a ruler that is the same thickness as the material you're using because when you're working with a material that has a thickness like foam, the outside diameter of whatever you're wrapping or bending will be different than the inside diameter. So now that I have the foam pressed along that line, I'm actually just going to try and roll, making sure that I keep it lined up with my mark for where the opening of the hammerhead is. So I now have my handle wrapped in its foam and I'm all set to put my leather on it. So there's the leather to wrap the handle. So it's gonna be the exact same process as the foam. Contact to make both sides and I'm going to redraw another line so that I don't have both these seams meet up. So the other one I'm going to do on the opposite side because that will help hold that together. Now I did that using a square and all I do is I put the speed square right on the edge of the the pipe like or the tube. Draw a line part of the way shift it down and make sure it still stays lined up on that portion and then just continue the line. And now I have a nice even straight line running right down the middle that I can use as a guide. So I've glued my disc onto the top. You can see my etching kind of worked, but it's the best I'm able to do with what I have at the moment but it gets enough detail there that you can tell what it's supposed to be. But the actual physical construction of the head itself is done. So I've gone and I have given it a clear coat, not using what I had normally been using, but using a Maj Podge. It's just a PVL or a PVA glue that will seal these outer surfaces and make it take the primer and paint better. I brushed on a single coating and I decided to use this because of the cutting up here and the knot work. I didn't want to use a sprayable rubber dip and risk having the rubber dip fill in a lot of that detail. 
So the Maj Posh worked a lot better because I was able to get into the cracks and then remove any of the large puddles of it so that the design work still showed up. So the next step for the hammerhead is going to be to prime it so that I can get ready and paint it. I also went ahead, because it was the exact same process as wrapping everything else, I've added the collar to the top of the handle. It's just done with two layers of EVA foam, one millimeter each. It's got a bottom layer that created the band of the collar and then two thinner strips on top to create the detail shape. And I came back in with my sanding stick and slightly rounded the bottom of the collar. So when that goes into the hammer, it'll create a nice transition between the handle and the hammer. So to create my pattern for my V-shaped grooves, that will actually, on the later models of the hammer, these are raised off of it. So I'm essentially creating these exact same things, but there'll be layers I add onto the handle. So I've cut a strip of foam that is the right dimensions, and I'm just going to be marking directly on it. And that will go on just like that. So I'll cut nine of these out and then glue them on as it goes down. I, uh, I have two pieces of foam that are the correct measurements that I'm just going to lay this on and use this as my pattern template and draw it on so I can just repeat it down and I might be able to get all nine out of one piece but we'll find out. So I've now glued all of my chevron bands onto the handle. I'm going to come back in with my sanding stick and maybe some loose sandpaper and just hit the edges so that they're not a sharp, ragged edge. I just want to clean them up a little bit just to make it look a little nicer. This will also clean off any of the rough spots from where the super glue got onto the foam. It'll just make it feel more comfortable when I'm holding it. The pommel, like the ring up at the top that will go next to the hammer, was created using primarily two layers of EVA foam. You can see from the side here, I've got one base layer that goes all the way around it. And then I have another layer, both one millimeter, that wraps around as a detail piece. Now, the final bottom part of it was another layer of EVA foam, one millimeter, to build it up, and then I put this, just so that it was a little bit bigger down here. I then used a piece of, I believe, three millimeter foam here to create this flared end cap. Now, to keep the ends of that flare from getting distorted, I glued on a small piece of Centra plastic. This made it a little bit more rigid, gave it a cleaner look to it. The knot work designs is again one millimeter thick foam that I cut out the design for my template, traced it onto the foam, cut out the shape, glued it in place, and then I scored the lines and hit it with a heat gun to cause those lines to expand so you actually have the knot work design. The strap is a three quarter inch wide piece of a suede that in here there's actually a second piece of wood right here, a little cap that I had built that is both contact cemented and screwed directly into the rest of the handle and that is wedging the straps in place and holding it. It's a very solid hold. It's not gonna go anywhere, but it made it so the strap was coming through the pommel. So the last part on here is to seal it. To do that, I'm going to be using Maj Podge. It's the same method I used when sealing the hammerhead. So I have managed to mask off and then prime the handle. I'm very pleased with how that's come out so far. 
before I actually do any of the physical painting, I'm going to secure the handle and the head. To do that, I'm going to be using a five minute epoxy and specifically I'm using one of the ones that will mix itself as it goes. So I don't have to take the time to do that. I will shoot some of it inside the head to get it coated around. And then I'm physically going to put some right onto the shaft that's going into the head. I will then hold it in place looking at it from both angles to make sure it's as square as I can get it to be. And I'll hold it as it dries. So my handle is firmly glued in place and it's pretty much perfectly straight, at least as straight as it's gonna get. For the paint job, because of being stuck at home, I'm using what I have, which I'm using a DecoArt Ex Extreme Sheen metallic paint. It's just an acrylic craft paint. And I'm gonna use this and just do a nice base coat over the entire thing, all of the details on the handle and on the head, all the way around. Okay, so we are down to the final stage for the hammer, which is the weathering. To do that, I'm gonna be just using some acrylic paint and some water. I'll make a mix so that it's a bit runny, cover the entire thing and then dab it off with a paper towel so that it just sits in the recesses and the crevices. And I'll add a little bit extra here and there for I want it to be a little bit dirtier. But overall, I want this to be a fairly clean look because it was always kept clean. I just want a little bit of age so it's not this nice bright silver the whole time. I'm just gonna put my acrylic paint in a bowl and then put a little water in with it. There are probably better methods for doing this than what I'm doing, but this is what I have used so far. And you can do this multiple times to try and build the layering up as much as you want. If it's too watery, just add a little bit more paint to the mix until you find what you like. Now, as I said, there are numerous different techniques you can use for weathering. I personally am actually not all that experienced in weathering. I always felt it was stupid to uh, age and destroy something that you just spent a lot of time building. I now understand the, the reason behind weathering. But uh, a lot of good examples are using the paints like this. Um, a lot of people like using a water mixable oil paint. They say that works very well. So some of the, the people I watch to learn weathering techniques are Bill and Brittany Duran over at Punished Props. They're actually most of my foam smithing skills I learned from watching their tutorials. Adam Savage with Tested does a lot of weathering. It is always, he says his favorite part about building something is the weathering. And then Odin at Odin Makes has some good ways of doing it. He actually seems to prefer using shoe polish of all things, but it seems to work very well for him. So at some point, I'm sure I will give that a try. But you can use whatever technique seems to work for you. I know.
So there you have it. That's how we turned two yoga blocks into a mule nair. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hopefully a few of you learned something. And hopefully a few of you will decide to go and make something yourself. Maybe you'll make mule nair. Maybe you'll make your own storm breaker. Who knows? See what you'll be willing to do. What you want to try. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Alex. This has been Drummer Artisifer Studios. See you next time. Thank you.